In this video, we're talking about the things you need to know about Bonaire's National Park. What is there to even do and see there? And how do you experience it? And come with me, I'm gonna take you along on the adventure that I had in the park so you can come up with your own itinerary. And would I recommend it? Coming up. And if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada with Where in the World is CL, and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out, and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. I'm gonna be completely honest in that when I went to Bonaire last year, I did not even bother thinking about going to the national park because it is kind of a trek to go there. And I have some caveats and a lot of helpful tips to help you decide if it's the right type of itinerary to build into your schedule to go visit the park. So let's start off with what you should know about the park. Bonaire's National Park is pretty big. It takes up nearly the top portion of the island or about one fifth of it. And it's 21 square miles, but it's really important to know that there's only a couple roads that go through it. And when I say a couple, I literally mean two, and some of them are one-way roads that sometimes are pretty unpaved. The park is managed by Stinapa, which is the group that cares for the nature and parks on Bonaire. And the national park is open daily from eight to 5 p.m. I highly recommend if you're considering going, go when it opens. And the reason why I say this is twofold. The first one is it's hot. If you're hiking, if you're doing anything aside from diving or just wading around and swimming in the water. It's really hot in Bonaire. And so you want to go early in the morning to get the coolest temperatures. The other thing, going back to that road I was talking about, it's not exactly quick and easy to get out of there. So the park rangers are going through and kicking people out by a certain time because it can take a long time to get out of the park. And so going early so you can actually enjoy it is really important. And they don't actually allow people to come in after a certain time. So basically, if you're doing the park, go early. The other thing to know about the park is that it ain't free. You gotta pay the $45 per person nature fee to enjoy the national park. And if you're on Bonaire scuba diving, you've already paid for that fee. But if you're not, it's required to be paid per person as you're entering the park. So you need your Stinapa QR code. That's going in the video. <laughs> in case you're not familiar with how this works, when you pay your nature fee for scuba diving, you get a QR code. So here we're just simply showing our QR codes and our IDs. Let's talk about a general overview of what there is to see and do in the national park. And then you can get into the details and see what it's like as you travel along with me later in this video. A lot of people come here to just see the sights because it's really beautiful to just pop in for a few minutes or longer if you're staying to sunbathe and hang out at the different beaches, but just seeing things like the blowhole, for example. See if it's blowing, take some pictures. It was not blowing the day I was there. And then there's just so many options to hang out at beautiful places and sit on the beach. But many people do come here for bird watching. There are so many beautiful, unique birds from the flamingos that are around to the herons to parrots to, there's just a really long list. If you're into bird watching, this is a really great place for that. And you can also just expect to see a lot of animals around. We saw tons of wildcats that were so fast I couldn't get any videos of them. But you'll see the turtle nests are all around. You'll see a lot of iguanas, which be careful of your lunch. And you can also come here for a ton of adventure. There's mountain biking here, there's, there's hiking, there's only a few trails, both walking trails and hiking trails. I've added links in the description below for one of the apps I love to use, which is All Trails, to give you more details about these hikes. And then there's cliff jumping. The cliffs here are actually really, really pretty. But uh, be careful because in some areas, the waves can be really strong and the current's really strong, but cliff jumping is something if you are a bit of an adventurer. And obviously snorkeling and diving are also the things to do here. Ooh, and the museum. So when you enter and come into the park, you'll find the entrance where you can pay your nature fee. Um, you can get more information about the park as well as the maps, etc. This is uh, one of your only stops if you need a proper restroom, but they also have a museum here as well that you can kind of poke around in. 
How about getting around? This is an important one because it's part of the reason why it's a commitment of your time and your itinerary in Bonaire to go up to the national park. There are only two roads. You have the long route and the short route. And what this means is once you are on the long route, there becomes a point in which you can cut back through the park back to the entrance pretty quickly. But a lot of the dive sites are beyond that short route area. And once you pass it, you're now on a one-way road and committed to that one-way road, which is not paved coming the long way back. That's kind of important to know because even though the distance isn't very far, it can take a lot of people an hour or more to get out of the park. If you're like me and you're driving along with somebody who drives like they're driving like a bat out of hell. Then you'll get out really fast. A four x four is not required, but I do think a truck is required. That's just my opinion. I was there after some recent storms. So it was, you didn't know how deep some of those potholes were because they were completely filled with water. Um, but you cannot bring quads, scooters, or anything like that. Not only can they not take the roads, but they're not allowed because those types of vehicles will disturb the wildlife in the national park. Ooh, and a helpful tip and reminder, there's nothing in the park in terms of amenities. So yes, you have your restrooms at the beginning and maybe one more restroom out at one of the more popular beaches, but there's no shops, there's obviously no restaurants, but there's no gas stations. So make sure you come to the park with enough gas. Which when I was on the island, we were paying $6.30 per gallon, which is the same as what I paid in the Bahamas the previous month. I digress. Here's something that I wish I got to see. I wish I just got to see what the road conditions were like. And so I taped a lot of it and I added it to the driving video that I have, link in the description below. For me, it's just helpful to see what it's like so I can decide if I do or do not want to drive there. But one caveat, there were parts of the road that were like this and it was just too hard to film. So the gnarliest parts of the road are not in here, but uh, you, you'll still see some stuff. All right, come and travel along with me because I had a great day seeing some of the top sites in the national park and then going scuba diving. But if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button, consider subscribing, and tell me in the comments below. If you know anything about the national park and have helpful tips, add them in the comments below so we can all help each other. And this is one of so many Bonaire YouTube videos that I've made. So make sure you check the description for tons more videos and for more resources. All right, let's start with where we went first and I'm gonna do my best on the pronunciation but we started our day at Playa Chiquitu. At Playa Chiquitu it was a pretty quick visit because this is a spot where there tends to be big currents and lots of waves. So in other words, swimming is not allowed here and it is way too hot to not be in the water constantly in Bonaire, in my opinion. And so it was a very quick visit to just look at the stunning cliffs that were there and to take a few photos. And so this is a great spot to just peek in, take a look, and then keep it going. Our next stop was the blowhole, but you know what? It was kind of like wah, 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 and that's because it wasn't blowing. And the reason for that is Bonaire was having very unusual weather while I was there. In other words, it almost never even rains on this island, but we had some hurricanes passing very close by while I was there. So not only did we get a lot of storms, but on the day I was there, it meant there was very, very calm water, which is very unusual for the northern part of the island. Great news for diving because it meant it was significantly easier to get in. Bad news for the blowhole because, I mean, to get a great blowhole, you need those big waves crashing. So that was kind of sad, but still really pretty. I think what's cool is that on one side, you have those stunning rock formations and boulders of Cerro Grande. And then on the other side, you have the water and the blowhole, but make sure you are protecting your feet. I was so careful walking around in my flip flops because the rocks here are very, very sharp. And if you need some tips around things that you should pack specifically for not just a beach location, but Bonaire, check the info in description below so you can download that free printable pack list. Let's keep it going to the next stop, which was Boca Cocolishi. 
and this is the name of the shell that's all over this area. And just to put into perspective, the drive between Playa Chiquitu, the blowhole, and this next one, we're talking about a couple minutes um, for each of the stops. So it's not long distances. And the roads on this side are significantly easier and better versus uh, we'll get into that later. But Boca, Cocalishi, this area is named for Boca, which stands for bay, and then those shells that are all over the beach. And this is the spot, in my opinion, of all the places I saw, that is the best place to go hang out on the beach. Bring an umbrella, because there aren't things that, like there aren't trees around for natural shade. Um, bring an umbrella. I definitely recommend this as being the spot to hang out because the way that bay is shaped, you get really calm water and you can just chill and hang out and spend time in the water and spend time on the beach. And for this reason, it's why we didn't end up doing our intended dive. So we headed next to Boca Bartol, which is the northernmost dive site on the island, but it's not that nice for just hanging out on the beach. And we had one person in our group who wasn't diving today. And so because there aren't tons of choices at the dive sites for also being great beach hangout locations, um, I actually recommend Boca Kokolishi as being the spot. It looked better than Boca Slokpai, in my opinion. We'll talk about that. But Boca Bartol is supposed to be a very great dive site, which is normally a really big challenge to get into. And again, because of the odd weather, we got really calm conditions. So you can see from these videos, it looks pretty good, but we scooted right along to the next dive site and we ended up choosing Playa Funchi. Funchi, Fungi, Funchi? I'm trying. <sighs> Playa Funchi, final answer, Funchi, Funchi. If you're looking for a full description of what this dive is like and what I saw, make sure you check out my other video about scuba diving and specific dive sites around Bonaire. And what's cool about this dive site and all the others is that the park rangers keep it very clean. There are trash cans and there's also picnic tables. But one thing to be aware of, or there are lots of pretty cool looking lizards that are everywhere and they are very friendly. So if you are not keeping an eye on your food, uh, you might have a lizard in your lap eating lunch with you. So just make sure you keep an eye out for that. We had a really awesome dive here. And if you want more info on this dive, as well as all, a lot of the other dive sites, I have a dive specific video that kind of brings you through what the entry is like, what to expect, et cetera. Link in the description below to check that out. But our next stop was somewhere that's a little bit more on the popular side. And a lot of people love to go here, which is Boca Salina and Slakbai. This is an area where lots of people hang out on the beach and it's kind of nice for swimming around and just hanging out. Granted, the beach area isn't that humongous it's still really nice though. Um, and this bay used to be one of the two main ports of Bonaire. And the word that I'm trying very hard to pronounce, slagby, slagby, is derived from the word slakby, which in Dutch is basically referring to slaughter bay. In other words, this used to be the place where they would slaughter the goats that they would send off to Curacao. Now it's picnic tables and restrooms. So if you need a proper restroom, this is basically your only other stop in the national park to be able to access that. But we stayed here and hung out for a little while. But once you are in this area, you are in the land of no return. In other words, you're on the one way road and you are taking the long road back. So it's kind of a long and unpaved road. A lot of people take it really slow. There's not a lot of places to pull over to pass people. So just an FYI, in case you find yourself behind somebody who drives slower than you, um, but it's a one-way road to get out, very bumpy, not paved. I recommend a truck to be able to go visit the national park and uh, maybe find a friend that drives a little bit slower than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I get car sick easily, like really easily. The park does have a speed limit, by the way. Let's talk about my recommendation. Is it worth going to the park? Only you can make the right choice for you, but this is the way that I think about it. Going to the national park is kind of a, at least a half day commitment, if not more. If I wasn't there to go scuba diving, I, I would not have been happy about spending that much time up in the park. And part of the reason is because, oh my gosh, Bonaire is just 
is so beautiful. And what you see in the north is really unique and awesome, but isn't necessarily superior to some of the amazing, amazing views you get on the south part of the island. And so it was really cool to go see everything up there, but things like walking trails, hiking, I don't really think of Bonaire as being the place to do these activities. Um, I think of islands like Hawaii for being really great for hiking. Not to say that there's nothing to see, but the terrain of Bonaire doesn't have as much to look at while you're hiking. If you are a bird watcher though, it's probably a good idea to go up to the national park or if you're into mountain biking or if you want a little adrenaline rush and want to try cliff jumping. But in terms of just hanging out on the beach and catching some good views, whoo! There are too many options elsewhere on the island. Come join me in my next video. I talk about other things to do on Bonaire. There's a lot to do when you're not scuba diving. Come join me in that video and I'll talk to you about some of the beaches I do recommend. Climb Bonaire is not on that list and I'll see you over there. Ciao.